In business, the Senate on Tuesday asked the federal government to consider a comprehensive review of the power privatization policy with a view to reversing the current arrangement. The Red Chamber said Nigerians will not enjoy stable power supply in the next 10 years if the activities of the distribution companies were not reviewed and restructured. The Senate President, Hamid Lawan, stated this on Tuesday after the Senate had considered and approved a motion by Senator Gabriel Suswan on the power sector recovery plan. And joining us live is Roman Daka Wunodi, founder and CEO of ZKJ Energy Partners Limited. Thank you very much for joining us on the news. Uh, thank you very much. The Senate on Tuesday asked the federal government to consider a comprehensive review of the power privatization policy with a view to reversing the current arrangement. What's your take on this? Um, well, I think that the headline is, uh, it's a bit jarring, it's a bit scary. Uh, you will think that um, it just calls for immediate reversal of the privatization. But uh, I think that uh, this is a frustration being shown by uh, government in some quarters uh, with uh, this satisfaction with how the reform has turned out and uh, the fact that uh, power supply to homes and businesses have not improved since uh, the handover of uh, assets to the distribution companies. If you recall, uh, the National Executive Council had also set up a committee headed by uh, the governor of Kaduna State to look into uh, the ownership of the distribution companies, which uh, they more or less extended uh, to looking at the whole uh, power sector to see what is gone wrong with that. So I think this is an echo of what you're hearing from different government quarters that um, there is a, some satisfaction, dissatisfaction with uh, uh, how the reform, uh, the results of the reform. But, you know, apart from asking the federal government to look at the distribution companies for restructuring it, you can also hear that, as a matter of fact, the Senate also. Uh, consider the interventions that have been made in the sector for the past uh, so many years. And they actually said, you know, has it been adequate? Uh, has government done its own part? Uh, and then, uh, so they realized that, you know, government needs to step in. And I think it's a frustration that government continues to step into this. But at the end of the day, um, yes, uh, the restructuring has to be done, but it might not just be uh, reversal of the privatization as it is. Mr. Wanudi, it's pretty much seemed like a search of a needle in a haystack in getting our power situation right. What are the mitigating factors here? Well, you know, um, it, it's complex, but at the same time, uh, it is simple. You know, it has complex parts, but the thing is that I think we have to stay on the path of this reform uh, it's, a, it's a long journey, and uh, the expectations that things will just turn magical uh, overnight is, um, I think that's where we've always had it wrong, uh, that these things will just be uh, like a magic wand. Once we privatize, things are going to change, and people started expressing frustration too early, and then um, you find out that uh, certain statements that are made by people who expect things to be uh, to turn around very quickly, tend to unnerve the market, and then, you know, causes a capital um, scare, uh, if that's the word. Uh, so I, I think that leadership is important uh, within the private sector and the public sector, that people stay uh, consistent with policies and uh, uh, what needs to be done. And then the regulation needs to be firm and fair. So there are some distribution companies who are doing very well, and then there are others who don't do so well. And uh, to the extent that they're not being sanctioned, the ones who are doing well might just slacken up. So right. uh, first and foremost, I think leadership is most important before getting into the technical issues of whether distribution companies have enough meters or transmission uh, has enough um, uh, transmission capacity and generation and gas and all those parts. You know, those things need to talk to each other. But I think the simple thing is that we need uh, leadership uh, that is consistent and, uh, and true uh, about this um, in this industry, both from the private sector. So we're talking about corporate governance in the privatized companies and then uh, within government, some consistency in policy and regulation. Let me pick your brain on the issue of decentralization and the use of alternative power sources. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, what's, what's your take on that when it comes to the decentralization and the use of alternative sources of power? 
Uh, when you mean alternative sources, are you referring to renewable energy? Renewable energy, solar systems, and, and the likes. Yeah, you know, uh, the thing about solar systems and, uh, uh, say, rooftop and all those, uh, they play a part, but, you know, at the end of the day, they're just like generator. The only thing is that they, they could be cheaper, they're greener, and uh, to the extent that the cost of, um, of solar panels and RE technology is coming down, they could be competitive. But at the end of the day, uh, they will not, to a large extent, uh, supplement what we need. We need power for industrialization for industries. So um, when we saw alternative uh, energy, you're talking about uh, the ones for electricity access to support homes. But for the industries, we need utility scale solar. So we're talking about, you know, uh, the 50 megawatts, the 20 megawatts type of solar uh, systems, which uh, to a large extent are, are not, I wouldn't see them as alternative that complementary to uh, what we have in the system. Okay. Now, finally, what, what policies do you think should be prioritized to enable a significant growth in, in the power sector? I think that the very first thing that we need to do is that we, uh, where we're struggling now is the market, the retail market, what happens at homes and businesses. And I think that uh, we need, uh, to the extent that we all talk about cost-reflective tariff, it's important that we have a cost-reflective tariff, but also it's important that the tariff makes sense and offers a level of service to people. Uh, so uh, that is one of the parts, uh, one of the things that we need to work on. And we're seeing um, uh, distribution companies like Ikeja implement that, where you take a cluster of uh, uh, consumers and give them not just premium power, but give them what they require at a price that has been agreed with them. And then they have reliable power uh, to conduct their businesses uh, or at least for living. So that is one part that is very important. We need to look at the retail market, segment it uh, in a fair way, and make sure that people get supply uh, according to how much they want to pay and uh, the way they live their lives. That's very important. Uh, we cannot continue uh, treating every distribution company as one size fits all. Within the distribution companies, there are clusters and they need to be addressed as, a, as a different segments of consumers. Mr. Rumundaka Wonodi, thank you for joining us on the news and for your time. Thank you very much.